Hello, I'm Shail Morg, co-founder of Codename One. I want to talk to you about how Codename One can help you build mobile applications for Android, iPhone, iPad, and other devices while leveraging your existing skills. First, let's talk about what Codename One is at a bird's eye view. Codename One allows developers to build true native applications, not HTML5 or PhoneGap applications, real native apps. We work directly on Android's native VM when running on Android, but on iOS we translate the code to C and integrate it with Objective-C, producing performance that is up to three times faster than iOS native code. Yes, faster than native. We are also free and open source, so we hope you join our community and take part in that. So let's start with a quick demo uh, of what Codename One can accomplish, followed by how you can build a Codename One application. As you can see here, I have two elements on the screen. One is my physical iPad. It's mirrored through the Wi-Fi onto my Mac and then recorded on video. So any video skipping is related to that overhead. The second screen is our Codename One simulator, which we use for development. Unlike desktop development, when building two devices, we need to simulate the various device behaviors. And this is the tool that allows us to accomplish that. I can rotate the simulator and access a great deal of functionality right from here ranging from a unit test recording tool to bug tracking tools and network monitoring tools. As you can see, we have quite a few animations we can do in this UI, which work the same both in the simulator and on the physical device. Notice that the UI arranges itself differently when running on a tablet and on a phone. These are all trivial to accomplish using Codename One and are mostly automatic. We can change the look of the application completely and give the application a more plain vanilla look or a rich and completely controlled look, such, such as our leather theme. We can preview the application on a Nexus One simulator. As you can see, while the basic UI looks the same, there are many small differences underneath. We automatically adapt to Android's glowing edges instead of the iPhone's snap behavior. Buttons look different, alignment is different, and many other things behave differently. Yet we can apply things such as leather theme to make everything look and act more uniformly across different platforms. Then again, we can do the exact opposite and make things look like native Android 2 in this particular case or like Android 4 when running on a Galaxy Nexus. Everything on a Galaxy Nexus will have uh, Android 4's feel including the actual native action bar behavior underneath. So let's see how it's done. I'm using NetBeans here, but this should work just as well on Eclipse. First, we can create a new Hello World application using the new application wizard. We can just pick a theme and the default application. You will notice we have several theme types we can pick, such as the native theme or various other themes. We will pick the social brew theme. Next, we can pick the default application we want. We can create a hand-coded application or go with a GUI build application such as the Tabs app, which I will pick. We now have a newly created application in place, which we can launch using NetBeans, Debug, etc. We can play with the application in the simulator just like we can in any other application.
In the Codename One Designer, we can customize the theme, GUI, images, localization, and many other aspects of your application. It's your one-stop shop for user interface, multiple D, uh, DPI support, and localization. The theme is as powerful as CSS in many regards, but much simpler. Everything is visual, and we can customize the whole thing from one place. We have nine-piece borders, which we can cut, and they would automatically generate a version for every DPI. I will talk more about this later. Nine-piece borders are borders that are assembled dynamically from nine images. They can grow without distortion and perform really well while providing a very rich look to the application. We can set transitions, fonts, and pretty much everything from this one place. We also have the GUI Builder section, which allows us the sort of drag and drop user interface we are used to. You can experiment and preview the layout behavior in this one place. For example, here I picked the box layout Y that arranges components in a column. And once I picked that, I can now drag elements into place and just double click them to edit them. We also have many layout managers and you can nest containers one into another to achieve pretty much any design you have in mind. The image section allows us to add multi-images, which can adapt to every DPI. DPI is the device density, which varies widely between devices. For instance, iPhone 4 has approximately 300 pixels per inch, while the iPhone 3GS has exactly half of that. Making an image look good on both devices is impossible without multi-images. The cool thing about this feature is that the tool can automatically scale the image using a high-quality scaling algorithm and adapt it for common device densities. We can do it by specifying the image resolution of the source image and we automatically get images that match every DPI. To get a native application, all we need to do is right-click on the project and select the platform we want to build on. There is a bit more to do here since we need certificates for iOS, etc. But basically, this is it. On our cloud, we have Macs with Xcode and Windows machines, which means you can build native iOS applications without having a Mac or a native Windows phone app without having a Windows machine. You can build using our open source tools, but we only provide official support for this process to our enterprise developers since supporting native builds is very intensive. We hope this short introduction has been helpful to you. Please talk to us in our discussion forum. We thank you for taking the time to watch this short introduction.